Happy Halloween, everybody, and welcome to the Underground League, presented by the Underground Wrestling Alliance. And this particular episode is very special. Not only do we have a world championship match coming up, that's right, the long way to blow off to this number one contendership feud, the world champion CJ will defend against the number one contender and challenger J.D. Mercer. That's sure to be something special. A battle between friends and stable mates in the Midwest Mafia. But before we get to that match, let's go to the Valor Cup rules. The Valor Cup will be a series coming soon to UWA. And I'm going to go over the rules for you right here, right now. So, this is going to be a two-month-long series in which a lot of things are going to happen, as you're sure going to see. But this, this will last for two months. We will decide in the new year the Valor Cup champion. The wrestlers will compete in singles matches, the winner of which will receive points. How many points? Well, I'm glad that you happened to ask. Let's see if we can get it on the screen. Yes, five points per win, although in the event of a double disqualification or countout, no points will be rewarded. After this, very simple. After, two, after the two months are over, the two wrestlers with the most points in their group will fight each other. There will be two separate groups of wrestlers. All except the world champion CJ, of course, given that he is the champion at this match. And finally, the winner becomes the Valor Cup winner and receives a world championship match. And speaking of the world championship, let's go to the ring for this match on Halloween night. And you know, Halloween night is a night of scares and fun. But there's nothing fun and there might be something scary about this next contest here. It's a battle between two friends. More importantly, there is a bit of an unsettled beef here as we see the number one contender for the world title, J.D. Mercer. Now, J.D. Mercer, in his own right, has been a world champion before in other organizations, most notably the SDBW organization. But he has never been a UWA champion in any form or capacity could Halloween night. This night, in particular, October 31st, a day known for being unlucky. Maybe it may just be his lucky day. Mercer is known to use the stroke move as a finishing maneuver, one that's won him many times. And uh, he's kind of a wild card. You don't quite know what to expect, but speaking of things you don't know what to expect from, here comes our world heavyweight champion, a man whose 2023 has been a bit of a roller coaster. Beginning of this year, he was lost somewhere, kidnapped by the vile industry, then found by his friends. And after overcoming... Uh, 20 or so other people for the Tennessee January and winning that event. He will go on to win the World Heavyweight title from Chase Sullivan at FD2, then once again at Unleashed retaining. And here he comes now, undeniably the face of this organization. Carrying the totem pole and carrying that beautiful World Heavyweight Championship title. No one man to ever hold it twice. Flag Bear CJ. Of course, he suited up for Halloween greatly because he's wearing a mask. But of course, he always wears a mask. You never know what to expect from this guy. Now, these two are friends. They're part of the same stable, the Midwest Mafia. You have to wonder how the other members of the Midwest Mafia, that's the Slave, Cerberus, Jake Howell, and back, are going to be watching this contest. Two of their own going against each other, of course. J.D. Mercer, he got a big win at FD2. He was named the number one contender by E.T. He is our referee this evening. He made the trip down, as did Mercer. You can hear his eyes. It's a man he needs to make a crucial decision here this evening. He's the referee. So you know, these two have faced before. It was on one of our very first shows, actually the very first show after we crowned the first world champion the warfare episode one where these two had a bit of a stellar match and jd mercer actually walked out on that match there was no win now we find ourselves here two or so odd years later the world heavyweight title got some jaw jacking going on here With everything we've learned about the Valor Cup, you gotta wonder how CJ feels knowing about this tournament. The 
this tournament style bracket, I should say, this series that will take place. I wonder how he feels about it. Looks like we're finally going to commence the action. CJ defending his world title against J.D. Mercer. And there's a collar and elbow, and they lock up here. So he's going to back him in, in the corner. Delivers some big, stiff right hands to the forehead and skull of J.D. Mercer. Backs away. J.D. Mercer has had some time to study CJ and his offense. He teamed with him in the Survival War match that just happened. Watched him at... Uh, Unleashed, had a front row seat. Hopefully he's done, he's done his homework. As these two now commence, and CJ gets the up, upper hand here, using his momentum and his strength and energy to, to stomp down on J.D. Mercer, who has regained the offense, giving some big chops in, in the corner. Sends him in the other corner, does Mercer, and a big elbow strike to the world's champion. Pass the arm, trapped on the rope. Commissioner Mullins will now administer the five count in the corner, and Mercer will break but after some thing. I'm telling you, you know, these two are friends, but they both want to be the World Heavyweight Champion. J.D. Mercer has not won any UWA title. C.J. wants to keep hold of this championship belt that he worked so hard for. Because now Mercer is in control now with some brutal stomps to the breadbasket. We hope you're enjoying your Halloween night, and thank you for choosing UWA as a part of those festivities. As we look on to this world championship match, Mercer, CJ, as Mercer sends the champ off the rope, clothesline, nope, ducked by CJ, big clothesline of his own sends Mercer down to the mat. Mercer targeted the knee of CJ earlier, but that doesn't look to be any effect as CJ picks the leg with a leg DDT. That's patented CJ offense. And this is part of CJ's strategy. I say it every match that I see him in, but it's so true. He picks apart his opponent limb by limb. He has the fingers and snaps the fingers. CJ is not playing around. He knows not to take Mercer. You know, not seriously. Mercer is a formidable competitor. He beat Joe Anderson, who in his own right was a, was a former world and southern champion at FD2 to get this opportunity here. And he's had months and months to, to train as CJ moves the front face lock and drives him down to the mat with a DDT. That could have scrambled JD Mercer's brains. CJ's gonna go for the cover. And Mercer finds a way out of it. He didn't hook the leg. CJ realizes now he has to do a little bit more to get him as he's now going to work on the, the right arm now of J.D. Mercer. Both of these men have a clear goal as Mercer locks in now some sort of inverted dragon sleeper type maneuver. Trying to just to get the wind out of CJ to close off the gap between his lungs. But CJ finds a way out, now has the right arm. Transitioning into a Kimura and gets the Kimura locked in. This can break somebody's arm. One of the most lethal holds in all of wrestling. Locked in on J.D. Mercer who uses his head and forearms to fight out of the Kimura. But how much damage has, has been done to the challenger? E.T. of course administering the, the down count. Both men cannot make it to their feet, which they're going to do here. They will be double counted out. The match will be over. We're not going to get to see that as they're going to get to their feet. This has been a game of chess as Mercer now delivers a stiff punch. CJ seems to be on the ropes. Well, now literally, now he's been driven side first into those ropes. Those ropes are made of cable and harsh tape. They are not fun to bounce off of as Mercer has him in position, has him... Throws him down for the stroke. What a maneuver by J.D. Mercer, but Mercer's not going to pin him. He's not going to pin him. What is J.D. Mercer thinking? We saw this aerial offense at FD2. What's he thinking of here? Oh, my goodness. Just drove all of his way down to CJ. That could have... This could be all? No, it's not. Let's take a look at the replay of that series of events. J.D. Mercer 
He went for the stroke. CJ blocked it halfway. He couldn't quite get all of the stroke. He knew he, he had to keep going. So J.D. Mercer lines him up, ascends to the middle rope, and just drops down and delivers nearly all of his weight onto CJ. That knocked the breath out of CJ that I know, but that still wasn't enough to get the three. Two. Mercer. Three. CJ, I think, is a bit frazzled. He knows Four. that he came that close to losing the championship. Five. What do you think of the, about the bond between the, these two? They, they've been through a lot together. This match, the, you know, either outcome could really alter their friendship and could alter the chemistry of the Midwest Mafia in general. CJ now on one knee, as is Mercer. That took a lot of both men and a cutter from CJ. This could be the opening that the world champion needs to get back in control of the match as CJ's going to go over the cover weight. His foot is under the rope. But EG doesn't see it to the very last minute, but that wasn't that, that wasn't gonna be all anyway. Mercer found a way out of that one. Stiff competition here on Halloween night, the Underground League Halloween Massacre. Maybe massacring a friendship. As we see JD Mercer, former Valor champion in the NSVBW, has held a lot of their championship titles. Now J.D. Mercer is going to get him for the stroke again. He hits this one. This could be over. No. C.J. gets him. Goes. Shapeshifter DDT. That's all. No one's ever got to the shapeshifter. But Mercer is rolling out of the ring to avoid getting pinned. What a smart strategy by uh, the challenger. Not doing it again. Well, folks, if you want to stay in, take a look at this. The way C.J. just drives him down to the canvas. And you can see CJ grasping for straws. He's trying to make the cover, but Mercer understands he's been in this situation before, and he's going to roll out of the ring to, to protect his odds at winning the heavyweight title. So it's such a smart strategy for Mercer. Man. He's now on the outside of the ring collecting his thoughts. Going to get back into the ring now. Oh. CJ, oh my oh. God, he kicked the oh. rope. Hey, it took his head off. Hooks the leg. That'll be all. What? Oh, this could get ugly. Well, let's go to our replay to see what this match was all about. It was a story of perseverance. Mercer early on caught him with, uh, with a stroke, and he couldn't quite get him all, as I said before, so he was going to go to the top rope. And you see, he brought himself down. But even then, that wasn't enough. The weight of Mercer, well near 300 pounds, was not enough to get the job done. CJ then hits that shape shift to DDT that has won him titles before. But Mercer had enough ring awareness, and you can see him here. He, he realizes what's going to happen. He knows he has to get out, out, out of the ring. In fact, on the first warfare, that's he avoided the, that move, the, I think, the exact same way. And it was deja vu on Halloween night for CJ, but... After the kick on the rope and the KNK that took his head off, CJ hooked the leg, and ET counts one, two, and three. And that was all, and we have a winner. Still the world's heavyweight champion, CJ. And you have to wonder, after that kick on the ropes, are we going to see these two men implode? The tension was high enough going in. Jesus. E.T. hands the belt to C.J. as we are on the cusp of the Valor Cup. You have to wonder in C.J.'s head who will challenge him after these months over. And what will C.J. do during that time? Will he take a Hawaiian vacation? We don't know. Now Mercer and C.J. are going to get to their feet after what was a pretty hard-fought matchup here on, on Halloween night. Mercer is just irate at that decision. An errant kick to, to, to the rope and to the, to the gonads. That costing the match in that K and K that was like a damn lawnmower blade chopping a blade of grass that took his head off. CJ ex extends the hand and Mercer's gonna shake it. Well, we hope all of you have a really happy Halloween. It was great to bring you this action here from uh, two of the best that we have here.
Please stay tuned for more announcements on the Valor Cup and things surrounding that. But this has been Halloween Massacre Underground League. UWA, I'm Dan Birmingham. We will see you next time.